yesterday we talked about adding in solver and today we're going to talk about a situation where you might use it. So what I have here is a really straightforward um, example. I essentially have, a, a, let's say, a company. We make two products, maple tables, mahogany tables. Uh, it takes this much rough work to finish a maple table, this much for mahogany, this much finishing work for maple, this much finishing for mahogany. Then I have the number of tables I'm going to assemble. I have the price of each table and then I have the revenue. So what I'd like to do is I would like to know how many maple tables I should be making, let's say this is per week, and how many mahogany tables I should be making per week to maximize my revenue. Now this is within a certain constraints. So for example, I only have let's say two carpenters on staff that do rough work. That means I have a total of 80 hours per week. So this cell here cannot go over 80. I have available 30 hours of finishing work, so this cell can't go over 30. And I only have enough wood to make 10 mahogany tables, so the number of mahogany tables I can assemble can't go over 10. Now, how this works with Solver is I can say, could you please maximize my revenue based on certain constraints? So instead of me playing around with how many I'm going to assemble, I can simply get the computer to tell me exactly how many I should make to maximize my revenue. And here's how this works. I'm going to go to the data tab and I'm going to click solver. Now in solver you'll notice right away I can set the objective and the objective in this case is going to be my total revenue. So that is in cell F6. What do I want to set that to? Well I can set it to a maximum, a minimum, or a specific value. And this, you might remember from a previous video, is very similar to GoalSeek. Um, so, this functions a lot like GoalSeek, except I could add constraints, and I can have multiple changing cells. So if you use GoalSeek a lot, this is definitely something to check out. In this case, I would like it to go to a maximum. The changing cells will be the number of tables that I can assemble, so D4 and D5. And then constraints, I would want to add. So. In the constraints, the first cell reference I'm going to do is I'm going to say my rough work hours has got to be less than or equal to, I'm going to reference this cell here. You don't have to. You could actually just type in 80 in this case, uh, or you can reference a cell. And the benefit of referencing a cell, as always, is if I change these values, I can redo a solver and it's going to refigure it out without me editing uh, each constraint. So I'm going to click add to that constraint. Next one I'll do is the finish add that one. Also do the mahogany, so the number of mahogany tables I can assemble can't be over 10. Now, a little, not, it's not really a glitch, just something to be aware of. This is my last constraint I want to add, so if I click add now, it blanks everything out. If I click OK, it's actually not going to let me leave this box. It gives you a message. Cell reference box is empty or contents are not valid. OK. So on your last constraint, when I was adding that last one, you could have clicked OK and it would have been fine. Now that I'm here, I'm going to have to hit cancel. You'll notice all my constraints got added, so it's fine. It's just something to be aware of. You can change a constraint, you can delete a constraint, you can even reset them all. So from here, I've got my objective, what I want to set it to, the maximum allowable value based on my constraints and what cells can change. And now I'm going to hit solve. And it says solver found a solution. I said, okay, I can either keep the solution, here's the solution in the background, or I can restore the original values. I'm going to keep the solution and hit OK and show you what it's done. So it says, based on your constraints, you are going to make essentially 10 maple tables, 10 mahogany tables for a maximum revenue of 17,500. Well, that was useful, let's say. But I'm going to change my scenario. So I'm going to put the number of uh, assembled tables back to zero. And I'm going to say, you know what? Well, what if I charged a bit more for maple tables? Now what? Well, I just go back into Solver. Here are my same constraints. It saved everything for me automatically in the spreadsheet. If I hit Solve, it found another solution. I go OK. And now it's telling me something different. It's saying, well, you should make 20 of those and 5 of those instead of 10 and 10. So the Solver tool is so powerful. There's even more options that we didn't talk about in there. If you use GoalSeek a lot, be sure to check this out. It can take that kind of to the next level. Uh, or if you're forecasting like this, trying to work backwards in formulas, Solver can be a really big asset in Excel.